We are back. Welcome all. Ron Brownstein, the political legacy of Karl Rove. What do you think it is? Well, I think they came into office with a very clear strategy that linked together both their legislative and their political vision. And on both fronts, their focus was on unifying their own party. And they accepted polarization of the country as the price for mobilizing their own side. And in his first term, in Bush's first term, this worked pretty well. Republicans in Congress voted together at a rate not seen since the beginning of the 20th century. And he was able to pass much more than seemed possible given the size of his victory in 2000 and their majority in Congress. And in 2002 and 2004, they generated an enormous turnout of the Republican base. Uh, and they were able, as Karl Rove said, to gain seats and to win re-election, winning a majority for the first time since 1988. But in the second term, I think the limits of this strategy have become increasingly apparent. Even when he won re-election at his high point, his margin of victory measured as a share of the popular vote was the small ever in American history for a successfully re-elected president, left him very little margin for error, little little cushion of goodwill when things started to go against him. And you saw also in the second term that the price of focusing so much on mobilizing your base was at times Terry Schiavo, Social Security, pu putting forward an agenda that drove away, uh, energized Democrats and drove away independents. And it came together, I think, in 2006. They suffered a severe erosion among independent voters uh, in both the House races and the big Senate races. They've become more of a regional party under Karl Rove. They're strong in the culturally conservative parts of the country, but in the Northeast and the West Coast, they're, they've lost a lot of ground. So on balance, I think that he has been a brilliant tactician in the service of a fundamentally flawed strategy, and I don't believe another president will try to govern in a manner that accepts so much division in the country as the price of exciting their own side. Cato Byrne, is the Republican Party better off or worse off after the Bush years? I'm clear. Uh, David, you could throw up the same kind of charts we looked at with Karl Rove when Bill Clinton left office, right? I mean, within two and years. Did. Yeah. Exactly, within two mm -hmm. years. Of course, they had lost uh, after holding it for far longer. Um, he had lost the House, and uh, the, Repu the Democratic Party, I think, was demonstrably weaker following eight years of the Clinton administration. And yet, we have an unpopular war in Iraq, a Republican majority that seemed to run out of steam, and Therefore, look at what these, the partisan advantage the Democrats now have. Those same polls, of course, show that the public is, is not thrilled with the Democratic Congress either, of course. Um, I think Karl Rove's, the legacy, of course, is premature and mixed, but it certainly has to be said that he was largely responsible for three enormously successful races in 2000, 2002, and 2004. And even in 2006, the president did increase his margins across mm -hmm. demographic groups, not just among conservatives. He lost ground among independents in 2000 and well, 2004, it was the even while winning the election. Well, president, of course, in, in, a, in a midst of an unpopular war, to win a majority of the vote. Uh, oh, that hadn't ha Matt, obviously happened since 88. Matt Cooper, let's pick up on uh, an aspect of the interview with, with Karl Rove having to do with the leak case, the CIA leak case that you were part of uh, as well. And something that's very interesting, he, he went out of his way to say, I would not have been a confirming source on this kind of information and taking issue with, with Novak's testimony uh, and his column that he, that he knew who Valerie Plain was. Uh, he said he would have never confirmed that information. That's different from your experience with him. Yeah, I, I think he was dissembling, to put it charitably. Look, uh, Karl Rove told me about Valerie Plame's identity on July 11, 2003. I called him uh, because uh, Ambassador Wilson was in the news that week. I didn't know Ambassador Wilson even had a wife until I talked to Carl Rove, and he said that uh, she worked at the agency and she worked on WMD. I mean, to imply that he didn't know about it or that uh, this was all the leak of someone else or that he heard, it, else, or that he heard it is some rumor out in the hallway is, is, is nonsense. But he makes no apologies to Valerie Plain. Carl Rove never apologizes. That's not what he does. John Harwood. Back to politics and Karl Rove leading the charge in some cases against Hillary Clinton. That was a very well thought uh, 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 political attack on Hillary Clinton's uh, views and some of her past votes. Uh, what about the fact that he wouldn't talk about Barack Obama and some are speculating that just like in 2004 when they were building up John Kerry that uh, the Republicans were that's what they want to do here to run against Hillary Clinton. It's always hard to sort this stuff out. In some respects, he's making a statement of obvious fact. Hillary Clinton is the front runner. She is the likely nominee of the Democratic Party, although we've got a long way to go in this race. And she is a flawed candidate. But of course, we have an entire field of flawed candidates in both parties. Uh, so, uh, and if you look at everybody running for president right now, her flaws are smaller than anybody else's because she's leading. She's got a party that's on, uh, on the march in terms of public sentiment. Uh, so, was he not going after Obama to, uh, because that's really who he fears? It, it, it's hard to say. I do th I want to point out a couple things about Carl's uh, record. I agree with my colleagues. He is brilliant. He's driven. 
He's unusually involved and interested in history and policy, fundamentally different in that way from somebody like James Carville, who was essentially a political tactician and strategist for Bill Clinton. But let's don't exaggerate what happened. Republicans won five out of eight presidential elections before George Bush won in 2000. It wasn't long ago that we were talking about a Republican lock, lock yeah, on the right. presidency. Right. Uh, he did adapt modern conservatism to the post-Cold War era. Compassionate conservatism was a useful uh, function. But uh, he didn't create the national Republican majority. And I think it also has to be said that he didn't create the Iraq War, which fundamentally is the largest thing yeah. that is dragging down right. the president right now. Let, let's move on.